Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ahabita Fillah due to the closeness to the holy month of Ramadan it's very important that we fast the holy month with ilm with proper knowledge of fasting so I thought it would be appropriate for us to go through uh, some general ahkam of fasting. Ahkam means uh, rulings, and this is plural. Hukum means a ruling. So it's important for us to go through some ahkam pertinent to Ramadan. And before we do so, before we begin this uh, uh, reading, some of the uh, rulings pertinent to Ramadan and some of the benefits of Ramadan uh, and the edger of Ramadan that we need to contemplate the importance of Islamic knowledge and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said مَنْ يُرِدَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يَفَقُوا Whenever Allah wants good for a person he gives him understanding of the religion of course that means male and female the Prophet ﷺ also said, Talib al ilm faridatun ala kulli Muslim wa Muslim. That seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every male Muslim and female Muslim. So it's an obligation, it's wajib that you know how to do those acts of worship that are an obligation upon you. For example, all of us have to pray. So that means you need to know how to pray properly in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet All of us have to fast the holy month of Ramadan. So you need to have proper knowledge of how to fast. That, that's an obligation because you're a Muslim. That, we all need to that. Because for those that are male, certain ahkam per, are, are, pertain to them. And females, obviously, they have certain rulings or ahkam rulings that are pertinent to them. For example, when a woman has her menses cycle, does she fast or not? Does she pray or not? All of these are Islamic rulings that you need to know about as a woman. And so this is why it's important to have knowledge. And knowledge, the opposite of knowledge is jahil, is, is ignorance. And ignorance, if you are ignorant about those things which are an obligation upon you, then that is sinful. You need to know how to make the haram. How to purify yourself. You need to know how to pray. You need to know how to fast. And some of the benefits of knowledge in general, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you can have in Kareem, Yurfa'illahu minkum waladina utu ilma darajat. Wallahu bima ta'amuluna khabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you can have in Kareem that Allah raises those who believe from amongst you those he has given knowledge those who he has given knowledge darajat he's, he's, he's raised them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises the people who have knowledge and iman knowledge of what? ilm al nafia what is ilm al nafia means knowledge of the deen knowledge of the deen so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises this is why you see the ulama they're remembered with khair People remember the ulama, the scholars of Islam, everyone, even the mubtadi'ah, even people who have deviated in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they use the book, they use Sahih Bukhari, most of them, except for the Shia and except for uh, other groups that are far away from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But every Muslim that uh, has any kind of practice, they remember Imam Bukhari, even if they are deviating in their aqidah and stuff like this. Likewise, Imam al -Nawawi. Likewise, how many a'imma or imams of the religion? Because Allah raised those imams. Allah raised them because they were people of knowledge. A and they were believers. And Allah is all aware of what you do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we keep having kareem, and this is a dua we should all say, Rabbi zidni ilmin. 
my Lord, increase me in knowledge. And so there are countless uh, ayat and a hadith and the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that shows the importance of knowledge, and this is why we are going to talk about fasting. A last ayat I want to remind us, and this is relevant also to fasting, because fasting, one of the purposes of fasting, and one of the, the things that you gain by fasting, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab kareem, kutub alaykum siyam kama kutub aladina min qablikum la'alukum tatakum. Is that you gain taqwa. You gain taqwa from fasting. Fasting increases you in taqwa. It cre increases you in God fearfulness, in fearful of Allah subhanahu Fearfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearfulness of his punishment by, by avoiding his prohibitions, and hopeful for his reward by doing the things he ob uh, obliged you to do, the obligations. This is what taqwa is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you can have the kareem, innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you can have the kareem, and verily, the most, the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most, who are they? The ulama. Why? Because they have iman and they have ilm. They have knowledge and iman. If this is too strong, you can unplug it if it's too strong for you. So those are just a few uh, important points about uh, knowledge. Uh, regarding the rulings of fasting, the obligation to fast during the month of Ramadan. What is the obligation? First, let's look at the linguistic meaning of Som. Uh, Som, in the Arabic, as an Arabic term, and Arabic linguistically means different than what it means as a Sharia term. As an Islamic term, it has one meaning, and as an Arabic term, it has another meaning. Okay, the linguistic meaning of Som is, it, is to totally abstain from something, as in uh, is to totally abstain from something as in the following poetic verse horses which hold back and horses which do not hold back beneath the dust of battle while others are champing at the bit it is said that horses samat when they refuse to proceed and it is said that the wind samat when it does not blow which means that som and the word samat is from som sama yusumu Samat, that that means to withhold something, to sow. Okay? To withhold. As an Islamic term, we know refraining from eating, drinking, and sexual intercourse along with the intention to do so from dawn until sunset. Dawn is what? Is Fajr. Sunset is Maghrib. Okay? Until the times. So that means that son means, as an Islamic term, it means to stay away from all those things. To refrain from the things that we just mentioned, from eating and drinking, and our desires, and other uh, bad habits that we should avoid anyway, but especially when we're fasting, because it can affect the reward that we gain from fasting. Some Quranic commentators have said that the two kinds of son are mentioned in the Quran. The first is the juristic type, meaning that we're talking about the legislative type, the Sharia type, which means, uh, which is well known in the verse that I already mentioned, Kutub Alaikum Siyam. Fasting is prescribed for you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran uh, something which is a commandment, that He orders you to do, that He has prescribed something for you, that means it's an obligation. Fasting is an obligation. Why? Because Allah commanded it. Why is fasting an obligation? Because he commanded it. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands something in the Quran or something is commanded in the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, that means it's an obligation. That's the asl. That doesn't mean always, but it means that that's the origin of that. So if there's a speech, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa aqimu salah. That means establish the prayer. Allah has commanded you in the imperative form a command to pray. So that means what? Pray is an obligation, it's wajib. So that's the asl of commandments when we read in the in the Quran or in the Sunnah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you with something or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commands you with something. The origin of that command is that it is an obligation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us in Surah Al-Baqarah 
Fasting is prescribed for you. That means fasting is an obligation upon us all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيُسُمْ فَلْيُسُمْهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So whoever of you cites the crescent of the first night of the month of Ramadan, he must fast that month. فَلْيُسُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commands, فَلْيُسُمْ Then fast it. He's commanding you to fast. So that it means that the, the first sighting of the crescent moon of the holy month of Ramadan, that's the next day we will fast. And that's a commandment. <clears throat> and there are so many verses and uh, evidences for fasting. So the ruling of fasting. Fasting of Ramadan is one of the pillars of Islam. Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may become al-muttaqun, that you may become pious, as we mentioned. Uh, it was reported on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنهما from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said بُنِي الإسلام على خمس على أن يوحد الله And you, you had, you had Allahu wa iqamu salat wa ita'u zakat wa sum Ramadan wa hajj wa hajj. Islam is founded on five pillars. So this is one of the narrations of this hadith. It's founded on five pillars: the belief in Allah and His Messenger, the five compulsory prayers, fasting the month of Ramadan, the payment of zakat, and hajj. Of course, uh, now. What is the, the virtue, the benefit of fasting? Clear verses from the Book of Allah which incite the Muslims to fast in order to draw closer to Allah and which explain the virtue of it, the words of Allah, the Most High. وَأَن تُصُومُوا خَيْرًا لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and that you fast, it is better for you if you but know, if you but knew. This is Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 184. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to fast and he's also letting us know that it's better for us. That's our Muslim. There's Musada. There's benefit in this life as well as the hereafter. If we obey Allah and we fast. Because, because of the goodness which is inherent to fasting, inherent to fasting in these circumstances, it is clear to us that it contains the basic elements required for controlling one's desires. Strengthening one's powers of patience and perseverance and a preference for worshiping Allah while being at ease. All of these elements are required in Islamic training. Likewise, is it clear to us that fasting holds a number of healthful advantages, uh, except for the invalid, even if the per fasting person experiences some strain due to it. So fasting helps us in this life as well as the hereafter. It helps us in many ways. As the author mentioned here, he said it helps you control your desires. All of us need to train our desires to help control ourselves. Uh, it helps us to strengthen our powers of patience. All of us need patience. We need patience in obedience to Allah, to do His commands. We need patience in difficulties in life. We need patience uh, for, for when we lose people in our lives who, who die or whatever the case. We need patience in life. You have to be patient. And so fasting helps us to gain that patience. So that's one of the benefits of fasting in this life. Also, when we fast, it makes us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when you're hungry, when you're thirsty, it makes you hum it humbles you. And it helps you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are a, a, a believer. It will help you come closer to Allah. It will help you pray more with better concentration because you're focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're focused on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your intention, your niyyah, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, Verily the Muslims, men and women, the believing men and women, the men and the women who are obedient to Allah, the men and women who are truthful, the men and women who are patient, 
the men and women who are humble, the men and women who give sadaqa, the men and women who observe fasting, meaning like the month of Ramadan, the men and the women who guard their chastity from the Muharramat, and the men and women who remember Allah much with their hearts and tongues, or praying extra additional Nawafu prayers at night, Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward. So that means being from amongst those people and from amongst those categories of believers, aside from, from uh, praying and being the people who give sadaqa, and the people who are patient, and the people who are chaste, is the people who are, who fast. And what is it reward for them? Forgiveness and a great reward, meaning paradise. So that's a means for our paradise. That's a means for our forgiveness. It's a means for increasing our taqwa. Fasting and the Quran will intercede for the one who fasts and recites the Quran. Meaning on the Yom Qiyamah, it will actually uh, intercede for you. You're fasting. And there's a certain Bab and Jannah for the people who fast called Arayan. And we'll talk about it. It is reported on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Al-Siyamu al-Qur'an yashfa'ani lil-abd yawm al-Qiyamah yukulu al-Siyam ayy rabbi mena'tuhu al-ta'ama wa shahwati bin nahari fashafi'ni bihi afihi ويقول القرآن منعته النوم بالليل فشفعني فيه قال فيشفعاني In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was a hadith in, in Ahmed in Al-Tabarani in Al-Mu'jam Kabir and the narrators are used for a proof in the Sahih in the, in the Sahih uh, in Ibn Abi Dunya, also in his book, Majmu uh, al, al Jur. This hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, said, Fasting in the Quran, intercede with Allah for the slave on the day of resurrection. Saying, meaning fasting, it will, it will say, it will be on your behalf. And the Quran also will speak on your behalf. O oh Lord, I prevented him from eating food and from giving to his desires during the day. So make me an intercessor for him. And the Quran will say, I prevented him from sleeping at night because the person was praying and reading Quran at night. So make me an intercessor for him. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam added, then Allah will grant them intercession. This is an authentic hadith. So if we believe as a mu'min, Believing in these ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we see those great benefits of fasting. And that the, the, the that your fasting will actually intercede on you on the, the Yom Al-Qiyamah. Another important point of fasting, a rayan, as I mentioned, a rayan gate through which the people who used to observe fasting will enter, enter paradise. So there's a door in paradise called a rayan. It was reported in the authority of Sahl ibn Sa'ad radiallahu that he said Inna fil jannati babin Yuqala lahu arrayyan Yudkhulu minha sa'imuna yawm al-qiyamah La yudkhulu minhu ahadun ghayruhum Yuqal Ayn sa'imun Fa yuqumun لا يدخل منه أحد غيرهم فإذا دخلوا أغلق فلم يدخل منه أحد سهل ابن سعد رضي الله تعالى عنه he said verily in paradise there is a gate known as a rayan through which the people who used to observe fast will enter on the day of resurrection and none except them will enter through it. It will be said, where are those who used to observe fasts? They will get up 
and enter, and none except them will enter through it. After their entry, the gate will be closed and no one will enter it. So there is a door in paradise for the people who fast. It's called what? A rayyan. And this is an authentic hadith. And it was reported on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever gives two, two kinds of things or property in charity for a lost cause will be called from the gates of paradise and will be addressed thus, O slaves of Allah, here is prosperity. So whoever was amongst the people who used to offer their prayers, he will be called from the gate of prayer. So if you make salat, you'll be called from the gate of salat. So be uh, vigilant in establishing your salat. And whoever was amongst the people who used to participate in jihad, he will be called from the gate of jihad. There's a gate of jihad in Jannah. And people, the mujahideen, will be called from that gate. And whoever was amongst those who used to observe fast, he will be called from the gate of Arrayyan. And whoever was amongst those who used to give in charity, he will be called from the gate of charity. And this is a hadith. Uh, this is a hadith in... I think this is a hadith in Bukhari. This hadith in Bukhari and Muslim and the Tirmidhi. Uh, also in Nisa'i and also in Sahih ibn Majah. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, my, May my parents be sacrificed for you, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No distress or need will befall him who will be called from those gates. Will there be anyone who will be called from all these gates? And that was a question I was thinking when we read the hadith. Will was anybody be called from all those gates? This shows the fit of the Sahaba. This shows how the Sahaba had fit. Fit meaning understanding fideen. And it also means it shows us how the Sahaba how they not just had fit fideen, they also had hirs on a sunnah. They were also vigilant in knowing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they wanted ilm and nafiyah. Like many people, they don't want religious knowledge. They want to know knowledge about fitna. They want to know about this one. They want to know about that one. They want to take this person off the sunnah. They want to make takfir of this one. They want you to make takfir of this one. They want you to take their opinion and to be instead of concerning themselves about like the fiqh of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala ajma'in. They wanted to know about ilm and nafiyah, those things that will bring them to Jannah. The Salaf, the first generations, the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ajma'in, tabi'in, rahimahumullah, the uh, itba'a tabi'in, rahimahumullah, those first three generations of Muslims, they were concerned, uh, there's a, a, a statement that some of the Salaf used to make, so those three generations are called the Salaf. And they were concerned, the Salaf used to say, talib al-ilm, talib al-jannah. Seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. Because talib al-ilm, real talib al-ilm, is not to refute somebody, not to attack somebody, not to belittle someone, not to destroy people. Real talib al-ilm is seeking paradise, seeking to come closer to Allah. Those things which will benefit your heart, benefit you in your deeds to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increase your iman, which are statements of the tongue, meaning dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your shahada, and actions of the limbs, doing charity, helping people, praying, fasting, and all of those actions, and actions of the heart, tawakkul ala Allah, relying on Allah, putting your trust in Allah, uh, you know, having your intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of those actions. This is what the salaf were wanted to know. So look at Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and he wanted to know after hearing that from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, may my parents be sacrificed for you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No distress or need will befall him who will be called from those gates. How could somebody be stressed and have difficulty if they're called from all those gates in Jannah? May Allah bless us to be from those who are called in those gates, I mean. Will there be anyone who will be called from all these gates? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Naam, wa arju and takuna minhum. 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said yes And I hope you will be one of them That's like a dua from the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam This is an authentic hadith And it's a Bukhari Muslim And I don't want to prolong you too much But let's finish this last little important point And then the next time we sit we'll, we'll continue Fasting is a protection for the slave from the fire Fasting protects you from what? From the hellfire, protects you from your own desires, and our desires a lot of times what leads us to the hellfire. So fasting is a protection for the slave from the fire. It is reported on the authority of Abu Umama Al Bahli, radiAllahu taala, and who the Prophet Ali sallallahu uh, alaihi from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said, "Men sama yomin fi sabilillah, jaal Allahu bainu wa bain al nari khandatin." The Prophet said, Whoever fasts for a day in Allah's cause, Allah will place a trench between him and the fire, as wide as the distance between the heaven and the earth. This hadith is Hassan. And it is reported on the authority of Uthman ibn Abil, uh, Abil al As. Then he said, I heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Al-Sum Jannah. Al-Sum Jannatun min al-Nar. Kajunnati ahadikum min al-Kital. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said in this hadith, Fasting is a shield. We know what a shield does. Like the shield of any one of you in a battle, a shield protects you. It protects you in battle. Especially in the, the time... You know, most of history, most of world history, you know, they had some sort of shields. They fought on battlefields up until probably a hundred and something years ago. Okay? Two hundred years ago, whatever. That most of world history, they used shields. The different armies, the different... This was a, a very important part of warfare because people then used spears, swords, maces, all kind of different weapons that were hand-to-hand. -hand, or from archery, you know, protecting you from arrows. What does a shield do? It shields you from something. It shields you from harm. So the Prophet ﷺ made the similitude, made the analogy that fasting is a shield. It protects you from what? It protects you from the fire. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us all with ilm and nafi wa tayyibah wa amal al وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه